You are listening to the Adult Sabbath School Lessons for the third quarter of 2022. This is lesson number five of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide in the Crucible with Christ. This lesson is titled Extreme Heat and is ready for teaching on July 30. The author is Pastor Gavin Anthony, who was conference president in Iceland when he wrote this series of lessons. Today, your lesson is read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sunday, July 24. Abraham in the Crucible. Read Genesis chapter 22. Out of nowhere and without explanation, God suddenly calls Abraham to offer his own child as a burnt offering. Can you imagine how Abraham must have felt? It was a totally revolting idea that a holy God should request that he sacrifice his own son. Even if Abraham thought that this was acceptable, what about God's promises of an inheritance? Without his son, the promise would be gone. Let's read Genesis 22, beginning at verse 1. Now it came to pass, after these things, that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Now take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father... And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he found Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord Will Provide. As it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice." So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Now it came to pass after these things that it was told to Abraham, saying, Indeed, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor, Huz his firstborn, Buzz his brother, Kemuel the father of Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, Lidlap, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begot Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. His concubine, whose name was Rumah, also bore Teba, Gaham, Thahash, and Makkah. Why did God ask Abraham to offer this sacrifice? If God knows everything, what was the point? 
God's request and its timing were not random. Indeed, it was calculated to exact the deepest possible anguish. For as we read in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 147, God had reserved his last, most trying test for Abraham until the burden of years was heavy upon him and he longed for rest. End of quote. Was this the test of a mad God? Not at all, for as we read on page 154, the agony which he endured during the dark days of that fearful trial was permitted that he might understand from his own experience something of the greatness of the sacrifice made by the infinite God for man's redemption. End of quote. This was just a test. God never intended for Abraham to kill his son. This highlights something very important about the way God sometimes works. God may ask us to do something that he never intends for us to complete. He may ask us to go somewhere he never intends for us to arrive at. What is important to God is not necessarily the end, but what we learn as we are reshaped by the process. Jesus may have been thinking about Abraham's experience when he said to the Jews in John 8.56, Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Abraham could have missed out on this insight, dismissing the instructions as from Satan. The key to Abraham's surviving and learning through the whole process was knowing God's voice. And so to finish today, how do you know the voice of God? How do you know when God is talking to you? What are the ways he communicates his will to you? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.